Doug Peterson, head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, was very pleased with Mac Jones' performance uh, when it came to to his preseason, they they scored 31 points against Atlanta. This was the quote uh, that he had about Mac Jones' performance of the preseason. Mac has played extremely well the last couple of weeks and really has bought into what we do. He still reverts uh, to his Patriot ways every now and then, and we got to remind him he's in Jacksonville, but he's done a good job. He's done a good job managing, running the offense, getting everybody involved. He sees the field well, throws a good ball, so he's done a good job. Now, that's not what we've heard in the past two years about Mac Jones doing a good job, uh, throwing, throwing a good ball, seeing the field well. It's kind of funny how it turns out. But also, I want to say, let, let's add some context here because I know people are going to call it out. Doug Peterson clarified what he meant by Patriot ways by saying that hand signals, calls in the playbook, that's what he meant by Patriot ways, not necessarily a shot at the Patriots. Uh, but then I think it was a shot. I think it I think it was as well. Uh, but I want to say we just saw Mac Jones play very well in the preseason. Does this mean and that this is another one of those topics where I could be very wrong because that already happened with Baker Mayfield. Does Mac Jones get another starting job after this preseason performance with the Jaguars? Well, his preseason stats, 38 of 52, 73 uh, percent, 420 yards. Uh, 21 yards, three TDs, and no interceptions, which is pretty big for Mac Jones. He liked to throw a lot of interceptions when he was in the regular games. But again, he wasn't playing against the first-string players on the other team. But then again, he didn't have all the first-string players on offense playing with him. So I think he did perform pretty well. And I think that the jury is still out on Mac Jones to a certain extent, whether he can play uh, an elite level in the NFL so like it was for Trey Lance up until last week after he threw those five interceptions. So I think there'd be some interest in Mac Jones. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. I'm not sure why the uh, – I guess the Jaguars picked him up because he was available at a, the, for a sixth-round pick, you know. But he's not going to play for them. No. Uh, Trevor Lawrence just got one of the biggest contracts in NFL history. Tied for the biggest. He's yes. going to have to really blow it before uh, Mac Jones gets in there unless he gets hurt. Well, I'm not and saying did, Mac Jones takes over the starting position for the Jaguars, although that could happen if, if, if Lawrence he, gets if hurt. If Lawrence gets hurt, then, yeah. then Jones would be in there. And I guess it's decent to have insurance like that. Uh, but and Trevor Lawrence got hurt last year, and he didn't play well when he was playing injured. And when many people don't. He went 2-6 and, and yeah, looked yeah, terrible. 2-6, yeah. he was pretty bad. And he, after he recovered, he kind of never got the real rust off, I guess. He... he, he uh, they had a chance to get in the playoffs, and he, he just didn't play well in that last game. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I looked at those comments from Doug Peterson. I do think he was taking a shot at the Patriots when he said he revert back to his Patriot ways. Why well, say that? If you're not taking a shot at him, why mention them like that? He says, uh, uh, Mac has played extremely well in the past couple of weeks and has really bought into what we do. And that was after the 31 nothing victory over the Falcons, which um, the Falcons probably had their third string in there the whole game. Uh, he said, uh, you know, he, he really doesn't have the pressure uh, of being the QB1. You know, maybe that's helping him. He allows him to play a little freer. Uh, he, he was, he, they got him for a six round pick, so he didn't give up much. But, uh, you know, you look at Mac Jones' record, he lost 17 of his last 25 games. He had a little under 10,000 yards and 46 TDs and 36 interceptions. Uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, it's not all on the Patriots. Some of it's on him. Well, yes. Uh, while he did backtrack because it kind of it kind of went through the, the sports media landscape of Doug Peterson takes a shot at the Patriots and the Patriots development of Mac Jones. And he's like, oh, no, not really. I, I do think it was a shot. And I think it's a rifle shot. It, it, it's not a low blow. It's not an unnecessary shot. It's not completely just out of the blue. It's 100% accurate. The Patriots for the past four seasons, so last year with Tom Brady and now, up to now, while Gerard Mayo think did a smart job with, with his draft picks, I think up to this point, and even, to, even today, the Patriots have one of, if not the worst offensive roster in the NFL. That is basically, un, it, it's you can't even dispute it. They are at least bottom three. If you don't want to say they're the worst, they're bottom three. I think that, I mean, based on just penalties and just preseason performance and the fact that the Patriots strategy with Drake May not wanting to be behind their starting offensive line, 
The Patriots offensive line might be worse than the Giants, although I just saw Evan Neal basically be a turnstile in the preseason and somehow still is on the team. But besides, the, uh, moving beyond that. I was a Mac Jones believer from day one. I wanted them to draft Mac Jones. I thought he'd be great on the team, and I was definitely 100% correct year one. He beat the number one seed in the AFC. At one point, the Patriots were the number one seed in the AFC after Mac Jones had played a phenomenal game against the Cowboys, which they lost, but a great game against the, the Titans. The next year, it was special teams mistake, fumble mis- it was It was a bunch of mistakes that cost the Patriots a number of games that they could have beaten Joe Burrow, could have beaten the 11-0 and in one-score games, Minnesota Vikings, which made the playoffs. Mac Jones was tearing it up against the Baltimore Ravens. He did have three interceptions, but that game was down to the wire if Nelson Aguilar did not fumble. But I, let, let's let's take a little bit of an, uh, a more in-depth look at some of the Mac Jones throws because what did Doug Peterson say? Let's quote it again. What did he say? He said, he sees the field well, throws a good ball, done a good job. Now, what did we hear from the Patriots? We saw some horrific plays. The New York Giants game last year. What was he thinking? He nearly got pick six. Thank God he finally tackled the guy on a pick six. We also saw in the Colts game of a red zone fadeaway shot that went six feet forward. Not great. Let's take a look at the new and uh, brand new and honestly happier Mac Jones. Let, let, let's let's take a listen. I, 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 want you to, I want you to give your analysis on what you think of Mac Jones' performance here. So this is a beautiful throw. Right side, beautiful touch on the ball. I mean, that that's in the bread basket. Absolutely amazing throw. This one. Talk about the wide open, good touch. Maybe a little bit overthrown, but still. This one's a gorgeous throw. Beautiful placement. Only in a place a receiver can get it. That's another touchdown. And this one. Out route. Tom Brady got picked six twice his first year with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on throws like that. So Mac Jones looked good. He looked, he looked very good. He also scrambled a lot more. We saw him use some of his legs. A couple of these throws were were like bootleg throws. He's moving his legs with with a couple of these. I mean, okay, well, I, you make good points here, but I would that's I would cross say, field too. Yeah, I, I, here's the point I would make in, in looking yeah. at those plays. It wasn't a defensive player within five yards of him when he threw those passes. Maybe the Patriots should okay. take notes. Yeah. The Patriots had one of the it worst offensive It wasn't lines. a guy within five yards of him when he threw those balls. So Mac Jones is not a good quarterback under pressure. Under pressure, he collapses. He falls apart. He's got happy feet. He doesn't want to take a hit. So he was he was in heaven there playing against the second string defensive line because nobody came close to him. He stood back there and threw the ball down the field. He was lucky some of the receivers are quite wide open there in some of those catches, too. He didn't have that with the New England Patriots. And, you know, I, I think the, uh, it's unfortunate that the offense was as poor as it was. But every quarterback, every great quarterback has to be able to throw under pressure. And we didn't see that there. I think that when your offensive line is one of the worst in the NFL, what player can succeed under that type of pressure if you're not a Mahomes, Burrow, <laughs> Allen there you go. You made my point. Well, hold up. First Thank of you. all, first of all, how Thank many you. how many quarterbacks are Burrow, Mahomes, Allen? Three. Burrow, Mahomes, Allen. Okay, they're the top. They're this. among the top three. We, we, we hear uh, NFL executives, NFC executives say Justin, uh, excuse me, Jalen Hurts is horrible in a pure pass <clears throat> system. We saw that Jordan Love can't handle pressure, although statistically that's false. There's some of these quarterbacks that are in the top ten but don't handle pressure very well. Geno Smith, which a lot of people respected after his bounce back with Seattle, last year, fell, I'm not going to say fall off a cliff because he had an okay season, but was terrible against pressure. There's like That's the whole point. Uh, uh, Brady, Hall of Fame Tom Brady, hated pressure. Absolutely despised it. Now, he operated very well because he's the greatest quarterback of all time. But we saw as he aged, especially that last year with Tampa, well, a last guy, year with Tampa, Nate, he was 45 years old. He was okay? slinging it for, what, 5,000 yeah. yards? I mean, Mac Jones is a young guy. He outplayed he got Brady hurt in that the, game. After he got hurt uh, in the Patriots' his second Against season, the Ravens, yeah. after he got hurt, he was a different player after that. He, he was gun shy. He was I, gun I shy. completely agree. And, and none of those plays agree. that you showed just now, was, he, was anybody within five yards of him when he threw the ball? It's pretty easy to lay it out there when the guy's wide open and nobody's even pressuring you. 
Well, I would definitely assume so because, I mean, think about this. If you had a wall of six foot seven guys, 325 to 375 blocking you, you and I could make throws like no other because we're now, not I'm not sure I could now, but, you know, I, I think that... What I'm saying I think is that it, it's extremely easy. I, it's, I think it's, that it's I don't think that's a, a uh, you know, the, the, the sample size now with the Jaguars to me is not enough to say that Mac Jones is back and that he's going to be real valuable. And if he gets in games this year that he's going to be a world beater i think that's far from certain i was wrong with baker mayfield i'm not going to be wrong here mac jones will be a starter in the nfl again i guess gar- he's going to be I a free agent it. he's going to be a free agent next year and honestly if we take a look at this i think the giants should maybe consider trading a sixth round pick for mac jones seventh round pick for mac jones I don't know why the uh, you know uh, the Minnesota team might, should try might, to trade might make a pitch for, for him Jones. right now. That's what I'm saying. Why wouldn't Minnesota make a pitch for him right now? A lot of people said maybe Mac Jones should go over to Minnesota. Yeah, back up Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold, you know, depending on how he plays, may get benched, may get hurt. Who knows? I think it's likely. And then we could potentially see Mac Jones out there again. But I, I think, and I will take this to my grave. There are so many opportunities for the Patriots to help out Mac Jones. Free agents that that you know. Could have been interested in the Patriots if you just didn't spend. Like, think about this: Jacoby Myers, who was Mac Jones' security blanket, was a million dollars off. One million dollars. You know why? These aren't tens of millions. You know why this happened? And it's the same contract Juju Smith-Schuster signed. Yeah. You know why that all happened? It's because Mac Jones mouthed off on the field to, to the Matt coaches. To Patricia. Uh, to the coaches. Uh, he went the, behind Bill Belichick's back. He went behind back, Bill yeah. Belichick's back uh, to, to ask other teams about how to run the offense. I think it was Bill O'Brien. And after that, was after that, they they were, they didn't like Mac Jones. They didn't like him. Yes, maybe, they cut him uh, no slack after that. No slack. I, I'll, I'll give you that. Yes, I don't think going to you know Alabama coaches, which I think it, it was Bill O'Brien, um, and go behind Belichick on how to run the system is the best uh, thing to do. But if your team's not giving you the answers, if your offensive coordinator and, and your offensive game planner is a defensive coordinator and your quarterback coach is a guy who works <coughs> on special teams, which means that generally those guys aren't good enough to play significant snaps on either side of the football, then how could you be secure in your own position and feel like it, it's it, your team is giving you the best chance to succeed when those are your coaches? We saw the report. Matt Patricia, Joe Judge... That was a Belichick, hey, you want to come coach for me again? Sure. That wasn't like, okay, you're the most qualified person for the job. Because it isn't that. That's why Matt Patricia, he no longer has a, has a significant role. Joe Judge, I don't think, also has a significant role. None of these coaches have significant roles in the Belichick tree. And we're seeing with Gerard Mayo now. Gerard Mayo's flip-flopping on, on some of the things he says about Drake May. He's 100% the second-best quarterback on the Patriots. Drake May has outplayed Jacoby Brissett. What? This isn't some like Uno reverse I think card. Gerard it Mayo no. is showing that he's a rookie head coach. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff he said, it just doesn't make sense. They finally he broke at the end. They were asking him who's going to start. He says, "I don't know yet. I have. I have. I, can, I don't really know." After saying that Monday, to Monday night into Tuesday, he'll be able to figure it yeah. out. Well, his time's running out. Uh, I definitely agree with you. We're nearly, we're what, nine days out of week one starting? With I don't know Ravens why they, my own thought is, I, I can understand why they will go with Brissett. If they pick Brissett to start, then I understand it. They they have an out by saying, well, he hurt his shoulder. It's going to take him a few games to uh, to get healthy again and then see how May does. That would give him an out to start Drake May and then, he has a tough time, and Jacoby Brissett heals up. They could put him in. But uh, I'm still thinking that Jacoby Brissett probably would be the starter. I think that— Even I mean, though I think Drake May definitely has earned the, the right to uh, to start. And, and I think and people we'll will be very excited. When, when I think the, uh, everyone will be are. excited to see that. They want that. But— uh, I I think they're going to wait a little bit. And, and we'll obviously talk— we'll obviously cover that on the show, but my— my big question mark on who should start and, and if it's the right or wrong decision is, what's your objective for this year? Are you tanking? Are you rebuilding? Or are you still trying to be relevant? So I, I think it really depends on what your motive is for the season. And if it's, I want to win, then Drake May gives you the best chance to win. I, I think that the Patriots 
are in the mode of we want to win. We, we're going to do our best, but after about seven games, they're going to say we're in rebuilding mode. Yeah, no, it, it, it's going to be a very, very ugly season. I mean, and they have such a one hard very schedule. Very few teams to not be favored in a single game, a single game, and they play the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, well, they've got the they they've play got the like Seattle the Seahawks. Sixth hardest schedule in the uh, NFL. Yeah, no, their, their, their schedule is pretty brutal. Hi, everybody! Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.